Okay, great. So chapter two. Cap chapter two is about VAT and payroll. So I'm going to break up this video again into two parts. I'm going to use the first part to do VAT and the next part to do payroll. Okay, great. So let's talk about VAT. We know about VAT. We charge 20% on VAT. We will assume that we have to pay VAT. Now, how it works is fundamentally, businesses can claim back VAT. It if you like, because VAT is just a tax that we collect on behalf of government. So let's take a simple scenario. Here we are. So you buy some goods for a thousand pounds. Now, if there was no VAT, this is all that would happen. You would go in, <clears throat> purchases for a thousand pounds, trade payables, thousand pounds. At the end of the month or whatever, your 30 day period, you would pay your person, bank, a thousand pounds, a thousand pounds coming out of your bank account. So a thousand pounds a thousand pounds to pay off your trade payable and that would be the end of the story but unfortunately it isn't that way when you go in and you have to <clears throat> buy some products you have to pay this VAT um, you have to pay this including VAT just because um, the goods are marked up for VAT for, for non-business people but you can claim back your VAT so what does that mean let's do it like this again then so because like what I've said, because if you think about it, in trying to learn how to do this, you have to think, well, I have to pay this VAT. So you owe the supplier 1,200. Remember, this 20, VAT is at 20%. <clears throat> so if you're paying 20% on 1,000 pounds, you would have to pay, you owe the supplier 1,200. So take it from there. Start from that point if it maybe slightly itches you or confuses you. You're not, you're not entirely um, happy with, 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 um, with the process. <laughs> entirely happy with the process so then what you need to then do is fundamentally then deal with the other side of this so the other side of this is you have purchases and you have VAT so what's the argument well because you can if you like claim back this VAT when I say claim back it is an asset to you you will be able to it's actually called a VAT control account and it's an asset to you well what we're simply saying is well um, and because really the cost of your business in the end will be a thousand pounds Yes, you have a thousand pounds here and you have VAT of 200 pounds over here. So this VAT can be claimed back um, <clears throat> from the government. You have a thousand and you have 200 here, but you owe 1,200. So all that happens is, of course, when it comes to paying, yes, you will pay 1,200 to the supplier, no problem. But you will send a form off to the government, to HMRC, and then they will send you another, if you like. You send a form, it's called a VAT 100. Yeah, you don't need to know that. You send the VAT 100 per se, and then what will happen is in that VAT 100, you tell them, listen guys, you owe me money, and then they'll send you a check. And as the normal, because they send you a check, you will receive a check of 200, and that will clear out their liability, or if you like, the trade receivable. This is a trade receivable in effect. Think about it like a trade receivable. No, no different. It's an asset, isn't it? So whenever you receive money, one asset turns into another asset. And that, if you like, is how we deal with VAT. Um, then let's just, so, you see, the, the thing about your exam is, your exam is interested in the VAT account, but knowing the double entry is important. So let's do it when you sell. I'm going to stick with the same numbers. That makes sense. So, for example, this time when you sell, your trade receivable or your sales ledger control account, if you like, or you will charge the customer the full 1,200. Of course you will. They'll tend, and the, but the sale or the revenue to you will only ever be a thousand because you will be collecting VAT on behalf of the government. That's the double entry. 200 on this side, 1,000 on this side, 1,200 on this side. What will happen next? In due time, you will receive a check from your customer bank for 1,200. 1,200 and what will you do after a period of time you will in that VAT 100 form send off a check to HMRC to clear out your liability this is a liability so you can see that for sales it's always a liability of course it's, it must be <coughs> you're just collecting money on behalf of the government you will write out a check for 200 to clear out that check for two <coughs> for 200 right and that is how we we deal with that. I'm just going to do one more example. This will probably take me into kind of two minutes and um, maybe into, into maybe seven minutes. But we now need to deal because you see our focus fundamentally is on the VAT account because that's what this chapter is about. That's the VAT account for now. VAT control. So far I've just said VAT on sales sits on this side. I've just said VAT on purchases sits on this side. Now you can of course imagine because we're in exam mode that anything that opposes sales or reduces sales must of course go on the opposite side and anything this is just exa an exam trick when I say trick you just need to know that every everything else I'm going to talk about <coughs> that opposes VAT on sales will end up here and everything that opposes purchases will end up here so let's do that <coughs> so for example let's go back here 
So here we are. You sell some goods worth <coughs> um, <coughs> trade payables. So you have trade payables here, <coughs> 1,200. <coughs> and you have purchases here, 1,000. And then you have VAT 200. And you have, for example, um, a sales return. So you send back some some goods back to the supplier you're not happy with those goods and let's just say you send back goods worth um, 300 pounds you're not happy with those goods so you send those goods back right so you send those goods back so you have what's referred to as a purchases returns so you send goods back for 300 well if you send goods worth 300 well I'm sorry you should not be claiming 200 the only reason you're claiming 200 is because you're saying that you bought goods worth a thousand two hundred right but you aren't going to be paying for goods worth thousand you're going to be paying for goods worth 900 right so you know that the VAT you should be paying really on uh, that you should be claiming on forgive me is 900 so how do we deal with this well what we do is we break this up again into its VAT and non VAT elements to actually recognize what VAT it is we should be claiming back so if that's 300 that we're returning you can see straight away that my purchases returns is made up of the breakup of this into it because this includes the VAT right this includes the 20 percent so this 300 right now is at 120 percent I need to break this up into 20 percent and to a hundred percent and when I do that, I'll find out that I have here 50, and I have here 250. 250 credit, 50 credit matches the 300 debit. <clears throat> so, because I don't want to go over that sort of seven-minute mark, you can see that this thing here, this thing about the purchases returns, I can apply this to my discounts received. I can literally just change this and put discounts received. Right, and that would be exactly the same process. Anything that would reduce so my purchases returns and my discounts received will 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 lead to a fall in my VAT. So if I go back to my um, VAT account, you can see straight away here that VAT on purchases returns will be on this side. VAT on discounts received will be on this on this side. And the reverse happens for sales. I'm just going to do that really quickly and just swap my sides again very quickly so what I'm just gonna do that I know I'm over it but just bear with me what do I have I have sales I have a thousand two a thousand trade receivables a thousand two hundred and I have saying that I owe the government two hundred pounds well if a customer returns to you three hundred pounds worth of goods well you no longer owe the government VAT of two hundred pounds the customers returned um, so we have sales returns He's returned 300 pounds worth of goods, telling you he doesn't owe you anymore. So therefore, that is made up of 250 here and 50 here. So how much will you give the government? You give the government, if you like, just 150, right? That's 200 minus 50. Now, again, sales returns could be the same thing as discounts allowed. You could have allowed a discount of 300, telling the customer to pay you 900. Same principle, discounts allowed. Or, of course, bad debts or irrecoverable debts, bad debts. So you have that. Those three things could, of course, will all end up being debits. Therefore, the associated VAT will also be, if you like, a debit because we're breaking that up. So going back to this page, here that therefore means that VAT on bad debt, VAT on sales returns, VAT on discounts allowed will all sit on this side and that's what this exam question is really trying to get they want you to know about your VAT control account and what things go on what side with a bit of practice the more often you do it you get better at it but this is a template for it great stuff I need to make the second part of this video I've gone over that it's almost nine minutes